The Phoenix Project was founded on October 24, 1945. The Second War to end all wars was over, but there were those who understood that we could no longer afford to think in terms of nations and empires. For a time, the Phoenix Project successfully navigated the political conflicts of its era. That was our golden age. Phoenix Project operatives scoured the world for clues. We had bases in two dozen countries. Even the heavens were not off limits. But out there, on the far side of the moon, began our downfall. The failure of the Phoenix 2 mission exposed us to our enemies in the UN stripped of resources and scattered to the winds, we were reduced to a secret, a memory. When the Pandora virus woke up, we should have been the first line of defense. When huge clouds of mist appeared over the sea, when people started vanishing, we should have figured out what was going on. And when those people started coming back, changed, hostile, alien, we should have been ready to fight, but we failed. The ecosystem started to change, imperceptibly at first, then faster and faster. Three factions arose. New Jericho, trying to restore order and purity. Sinedrin, hoping to build a world without hierarchies. And the Disciples of Anu, a new syncretic religion dedicated to adaptation and biological change. At war with the world, and at odds with each other, these factions cannot find a way forward. Now the mist is returning, and armies are rising from the sea. Without the Phoenix Project, humanity will fall. It's time to rise from the ashes. Hello there and welcome back to our Let's Play of Phoenix Point. In the last video we covered the first two little missions of the tactical tutorial and this time around we are dropping straight into the strategic view, the geoscape. Uh, I will be going through the tutorial here as well. This one is actually quite brief and then we'll be able to get into our first proper missions. So the geoscape shows the world and all the locations and sites of interest. In the beginning, all we know about is our base Phoenix Point. So here's the world. It looks like a pretty empty place at the moment. So this is set in the year 2047. The polar ice caps have melted. There is no uh, Arctic there. Um, there is uh, obviously the... Um, Antarctic continental mass is still there, but the ice has melted. And this has caused sea levels to rise. So you'll notice that there are some places underwater. Quite a lot of the uh, the islands down here are flooded out. Uh, specifically, if we go and look at places like Europe, you can see the eastern UK, um, Denmark, the Netherlands, um, parts of Norway and Sweden and Finland, pretty much all underwater. Florida's gone massive amounts of water here in South America. So, you know, the world's really suffered at the rising sea levels. And here we are with our Phoenix Project base here, somewhere just outside of India, maybe, uh, just on the uh, on the borders of India. Um, these positions are procedurally generated. So every time you start a new game, the starting position of your base will be different. We're going to go ahead and click on the bases tab as instructed. So Phoenix Bases, your base is your stronghold containing all facilities as well as vital resources such as food, materials and tech. Phoenix Point is in bad shape. You need to repair your vehicle bay before you can launch your Manticore aircraft and it will take some time. So our vehicle bay is damaged. We've just been fighting some Arthrons in there. We put a few shots in the wall. We blew some stuff up with grenades. We need to repair this place up. So we're going to go and select repair this facility. It is going to cost us some materials and some tech. We can see our resources along the top of the screen here. So tech is a resource for building high tech items. Materials is more for general construction. We also have food. Uh, our food is required to uh, feed all of our personnel. The more soldiers that we have, the more food we are going to use. We've also got some other useful information along the top here, such as how many soldiers we have, along with the amount of uh, barrack space we have within our 
base. Our living quarters can only accommodate eight soldiers, so we've got room for two more. Our vehicle bay can accommodate two ground-based vehicles and two aircraft. We only have one aircraft at the moment, which is the Manticore. And then we've got our general stores. And general stores is basically everything else. Armor, equipment, ammunition, weapons. Uh, we're taking up 56 of the 200 available spaces. So we're going to go ahead and repair the vehicle bay. That's going to take 10 hours. So we're going to go back to the Geoscape. And as you can see, the game starts on the 1st of January 2047 at midnight. And at the moment, the game is paused. Nothing's happening and our vehicle bay is not getting repaired. So we're going to go ahead and unpause the simulation here. We can use these plus and minus buttons to uh, increase and decrease the speed of the passage of time. But we'll leave it on default. And as you can see, after 10 hours, our vehicle bay is repaired. The Manticore is our aircraft for transporting soldiers and exploring the world. The aircraft's crew is shown in the action bar in the bottom of the screen using their soldier class icons. Send your manticore to the unexplored site. So down here at the bottom you can see we have manticore 1 selected and you can see that we have here a heavy which is Adrian from the um, tutorial. We also have Jason our sniper. We have a second sniper called Emo Stone. We have ourselves Lise, who was our assault from the um, tutorial, as was Bave, And we also have Leah Goodman, who is one of our other assaults. You may notice if you are a soldier roster or signature edition customer, backer or hire, you may see your name pop up in this playthrough. Congratulations to you if you do. I will not be renaming anybody uh, in this playthrough for quite a while, so you may just randomly find yourself appearing. Let's go ahead and move our manticore over to this unexplored site. We're going to move over there. So as we tell the manticore to move, it automatically unpauses the simulation. As you can see, it took us about an hour and 40 minutes to fly there. So it does take time to travel around the globe. Initially, all sites on the Geoscape are unexplored, marked with a question mark. You need at least one soldier on board an aircraft in order to explore. Exploration takes time and you may get ambushed, so be on your guard. So now we're going to explore the site. So we click on it. We've got soldiers on board. We've got the aircraft sort of in orbit. So let's go ahead and explore. Again, the game will unpause while the exploration happens. And we have ourselves a mission. This is a scavenging site. This is a good place for us to gain some resources by eliminating all the enemies that are trying to claim the resources. So the enemies are going to try and destroy these crates. As you can see, they represent materials, food and tech. We want to try and wipe the enemy out before they can destroy too many of these. The more of these that survive, the more resources we get. The threat level is quite low. It's a daytime mission and the enemy is Pandoran. The reason it tells us the enemy type is because Phoenix Point does also contain human non-player factions. There's New Jericho, Synedrion, the Disciples of Arnu, along with some independent factions as well. And there will be many missions where you have to fight against those. So we're actually fighting the, uh, the Pandora virus uh, here, the Pandorans. So let's go in and start the mission. And here we are. We have landed in the Manticore. And uh, this map, we can zoom out quickly if we hold down the middle mouse button. That gives us a good view of the map overall. It's a relatively square-shaped map. And there's a few buildings on here. Quite a lot of it is in ruins. These little red icons. So first of all, this red line around the outside of the map. That's basically the outer edge of the map. You cannot go beyond that. These little flashing red schools. These are reinforcement points. These are areas on the map where additional enemies could enter the map from. Uh, enemies can also flee from the map if they are injured. And you will also see in some positions this icon here. This one's actually on a different floor, which is why it uh, looks like it's floating in midair. Reaching these white areas these are objective points and they'll give you a little will power boost so quick tip for controls because some people do fall afoul to this if you actually use the mouse wheel and scroll up and down this is changing the terrain level 
So we're basically looking at ground floor, first floor, second floor, third floor, and so on as we move up and down with the scroll wheel. If we want to zoom in and out, we can actually use the T keys and the G keys. That will allow us to change the zoom level. And as, as I said, holding the middle mouse button down will just snap the camera right back so you can see what's going on. The Q and E buttons rotate the camera. Uh, you can turn on this free rotation in the interface options, otherwise it snaps to 90 degree angles. So we've started next to a crate, that's quite nice. We've also got some food and some materials right next to us. Now we can't actually do anything with these, uh, we just need to protect them. Let's go ahead and move this sniper next to this crate as we've started right next to it. We might as well have a look and see if there's anything useful in there. So we have ourselves um, a Firebird sniper rifle magazine. And that's the Phoenix sniper rifle. If we have a, have a look here, uh, we are using the Phoenix SR, so the SR for sniper rifle. Now we do have one spare magazine for the sniper rifle. We're also carrying one spare magazine for our handgun. So ammunition in Phoenix Point is not infinite you only have a limited number of shots with each weapon and then you need to reload and you can only reload for as many um magazines as you have and magazines have capacities as well so this is a full magazine with eight rounds there is um an assault rifle magazine here we've also got some am ammo for the hell 2 cannon uh, and we've got a med kit. I'm going to go ahead and take the extra sniper rifle ammo. Be careful not to go above the encumbrance. One thing that you can actually do uh, with the inventory. Let me just go ahead and uh, close this now. So that will cost us one action point because we've taken that ammunition. If we have two soldiers next to each other, like these two guys here, and we open the inventory, and bear in mind, as we said before, um, opening the inventory doesn't actually cost uh, an action point. But when you're standing next to another soldier, you can actually see um, their inventory. So you can actually swap items between soldiers. Quite useful if one of you picks something up, you can carry it for somebody else. Let's go and see if we can find our first enemies. We'll stick our head out a little bit with this sniper, see if we spot anything out here, and we didn't. I want to be careful because I want to try and leave myself with enough action points to take a shot if we do spot an enemy. Can't see anything here. Let's go ahead and pop on an overwatch. We'll use quite a wide cone. You can watch in that direction. We could even do the same thing with our sniper if we wanted to. And let's go ahead and have a little bit of a look around this side of the map, the move. just to see if we can uncover anything. Doesn't look like there's anything around here. We've got these guys kind of all squished up in the corner, so let's get them moved forwards a little. I think we might be safe moving one in there. This is our heavy anyway, so he's got quite a bit of armor. He's quite, uh, quite tough. Uh, we've got Bave over here, who's another one of our assaults. Let's go ahead and put Bave in this low cover. And we will, again, let's just do a few overwatches. We don't know where any of the enemies are yet. We haven't spotted them. So they literally could come from anywhere at this point. Let's go ahead and put you on to standby. Let's put you on to standby because you don't really have enough action points to do anything. And then we have Lease. Uh, let's move Lease, probably not behind the exploding barrel, but let's go ahead and get you into some cover over here. Of course, cover is going to be directional to an extent, so not knowing where the enemies are coming from makes it difficult to put yourself in the right cover. And there we can see our first Pandoran and our second. So we've got a Crabman Brawler, so these guys are melee. We've got two of them are melee. Oh, we've spotted one over here. And uh, we actually got a kill from one of our Overwatch shots. Brilliant. So that's alerted this guy to our position. He knows where we are now. He's deployed his shield. He did take a willpower loss because one of his comrades has been uh, just, uh, been killed. Now we can see this red marker over here. That means we've heard something. So this crate has lost some health. There was a creature over here attacking it. It might have been this one or it might be a different one. That just indicates that something happened there out of sight. Let's go ahead and see if we can take that guy out. Our best chance is probably with our sniper. So let's go ahead and move um, cane break forwards a little bit here. And we'll see if we've got a shot on this thing. So... As I was saying about cover, this thing is right behind this like lamppost, so we can't really hit it. We could probably destroy the lamppost, 
but as we've only got a single shot, that's probably going to be a waste. We could attempt to take the lamppost out using our heavy. Now that's always a risk. But this thing is pretty good at destroying cover. Not all cover is destroyable. A lot of it is, but not all. Let's see if we can destroy that. Now we missed by an absolute mile. As I said, that's a very inaccurate weapon. But it was worth a go. It would have been funny if it would have worked. Let's go ahead and move a little bit further forwards with one of our other assaults. Now bear in mind these crab men are brawlers. That means they do have to get close to do any damage to us. So with that in mind, maybe we actually want to wait and bait them forwards. And I think that is what I will do. Moving out. So I'm going to go ahead and move forwards with this assault with Leah. Uh, we will go into an overwatch. We'll actually bring the overwatch a little bit closer. And the reason for open. that is we've got more chance of hitting the closer the enemy gets. And what we want to do is pretty much guarantee a hit. So let's let them come to us before we actually take the shot. Receiving now we do have some enemies over here. We don't know if they're going to try and get closer to us. I suspect they probably will attempt to go after the crates. So let's set up an overwatch in that direction. And we've got probably one more over here. We've got all of these angles covered. Something could sneak around from behind us. That is quite possible. Now this way looks quite blocked. So I'm just going to go ahead and run through here with our other sniper. And uh, bring her round to the, to the front. Let's go ahead and end the turn here. We can see instantly by looking beneath our character portraits how many action points we've got. We can see who's on Overwatch. So um, Ready for action. we can see that Bave is actually on Overwatch anyway. Has two action points remaining. So let's go ahead and just hit end turn. So he's actually backing off from us, interestingly. He's going to go and attack that tech container. Now that makes him a more risky target for me to attack because I could actually damage the container myself if my shots go astray. I can hear other containers being attacked out of my line of sight. There's a guy jumping over the wall. So this container is getting pretty wrecked. Okay, let's see if we can start clearing these things up. Now we could try moving a little bit further forwards with the sniper. Unfortunately, snipers can't move very far and still take a All shot. Set. Now we do potentially have a shot with this sniper from here. I think our heavy might be in the way. I'm just going to move the heavy out. I'm not too worried about the heavy taking hits because the armor of the heavy is brilliant. So let's go back to our sniper and see if we have a shot on this time. We do a little bit. We can maybe get very lucky and hit the arm. Let's let's roll the dice. No, we missed. Was very, very far away, so that one was always going to be a struggle. Let's move a little bit further forward then and see what we can do. And we will to fire. have a look at taking a shot again. No, he's behind cover. So that container's probably going to get destroyed. So I'm a little bit concerned about that. Let's go and put an overwatch on there in case Holding we get position. the opportunity to take that out. And let's see if we can deal with these guys over here. They're quite far away. So we're going to move a little bit closer to them. And we could take a shot. Again, once they've they're going to destroy that one. There's no way I can take both of those guys out before they can destroy that container. So once they've destroyed it, they'll probably move a little closer. Let's move out with this sniper and see if we do have a shot on this target. So I don't really want to hit the shield. It won't do anything. Let's try and go for the pincer if possible. Let's get see if we get lucky. And we missed again. Did some damage to the building behind it. So that was unfortunate. We do still have a full... Uh, range of action points on Bave. So, oh, excuse me, let's move forwards. And we'll just set up another Overwatch in this direction. We'll end the turn there, and uh, we'll let the enemy do their thing. So that container's gone, so these guys are probably going to move forwards now, which is good. These guys are much easier to hit when they're moving because they don't have their shields up, although you can still hit their shields if they've got it pointing towards you. Now, unfortunately, we're out of um, overwatches, so we do take a, an unfortunate hit there. You're going to keep hitting that. 
and we do manage to get it. And he's deployed his shield. But he is moving towards us, actually, so we do we do take a, a shot. We've actually hit his head, disabled it. So he takes some will point damage. And he has a bleed. We've got another one that's come right towards us. Red, you came out of nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. So we definitely need to deal with this guy. Let's go ahead and move in right behind him. Avoiding his shield. We'll put all of these shots right into his back. He is down. Now this guy is now panicked. We probably still want to finish him off. Let's move forward a little bit with the heavy. See if we're close enough to get a decent chance to hit. Yeah, we may be. There we go. Did some damage to the scenery, but certainly did more damage to that Arthron. Now, I'm not going to risk using my sniper to shoot this guy, because I'll almost certainly hit this guy in the back of the head if I do that. So, let's just move around to the rear. Targeting. And then we can shoot this guy in the back. And he is down. And that might even be the end of the mission. I think that's all we had on that one. Yes, it is. Excellent. No level ups for anybody on this particular mission. Lise, unfortunately, did pick up an injury. And we gain ourselves some more skill points. Let's hop back over to the Geoscape. So the scavenging site is cleared. All surviving crates have been recovered and resources transferred to our stores. So even though you can actually loot crates that you find on the battlefield, at the end of a mission, um, if you kill all of the uh, enemies, and assuming you don't just evac mid-mission, if you clear the area, you will automatically recover everything that is on the map. This can also include equipment that is dropped by dead enemies and fallen al uh, allies. So it looks like there was only the one crate on that mission. Um, we did pick up the med kit. We picked up the um, Hell 2 uh, cannon magazine. I'll say we're missing the weapon there for some reason. I shall have a look into that. But we've got ourselves some new equipment. So this tells us a little bit about mission rewards and fatigue. On completing a mission, all gathered items and resources are added to our overall supplies. Soldiers get fatigued during battle, losing one stamina point per turn and a maximum of 10 per battle. When stamina falls below 20%, a soldier will suffer an action point penalty in the next battle. Your so soldiers will recover stamina and health while resting at a base. As long as the base has a functioning living quarters that allows you to recover stamina and medical bay that allows you to recover health. So essentially, every mission you go on, you will lose stamina up to a maximum of 10. But if you complete the mission more quickly, you won't lose as much stamina. You won't need to return to base as often to recover. If you look at the status of our soldiers on the action bar along the bottom next to the manticore, the white lines represent our soldiers' stamina, so they've all taken a slight stamina hit. The blue line represents health, so we've got one soldier here, which is Lise, who has taken an injury. Let's go ahead and fly back to Phoenix Point. And now we get a brief explanation of the personnel tab. The personnel roster shows all of your soldiers and ground vehicles wherever they are located. You can transfer soldiers by selecting the location button on the right side of the soldiers list entry. You can customize your soldiers appearance and voice by selecting the customization icon to the right of the soldiers name. Select the personnel button and go to the equipment selection. So we'll click on uh, personnel. And we have the equipment button over here. So equipping your soldiers. You can equip your soldiers with new weapons, armor, and other items by dragging available equipment from the stores onto the appropriate slots in the inventory section. You can instantly equip or produce items in ready slots by using the plus ammo and plus items button. The armor section shows the armor the soldier is wearing for legs, body, and head. The mount section is used for special equipment that can only be attached to the corresponding piece of armor. So if we look over here, we can see if we wanted to take some more ammunition uh, for our heavy, we could go ahead and press the plus ammo button and it will automatically take one of the correct ammo type from the stores and put it into his 
backpack. If we didn't have any of the ammo, providing that we're able to manufacture it and we have the equipment, to, the uh, materials to do so, we will instantly manufacture one and place it in our slot. I'm not going to take that with him though, because it does increase his encumbrance quite a lot. And you do get six shots out of this, and we do have six in the weapon. So being able to fire uh, 12 shots in a single mission is quite a lot for the heavy. Of course, you do always want to make sure that you have ammo going into a mission. Into the training section, training soldiers. Soldiers can increase strength, willpower and speed, as well as acquire new abilities by spending skill points. If a soldier has used all of their personal skill points, they can use the Phoenix skill points, which are common for everybody. Soldiers can only acquire abilities for their current level or lower, and upon reaching level 4, each soldier has the option to specialise in an additional class. The last row of abilities represent personal aptitude the soldier is born with. Once you've adjusted your soldier's stats and abilities, we can return to the research section. So we do have some uh, level ups. We've got a level up on Adrian here. Uh, we can give him Expert Packer, which gives him an extra plus 25% maximum carry weight. He doesn't have enough skill points to unlock it. We could use some of the Phoenix ones, but no, it actually costs 15, so we can't afford to unlock that right now. We can go through some of our other soldiers. I think somebody else did level up, but there probably isn't an awful lot to do here now. In Phoenix Point, you can rename any of your soldiers by clicking on the name of the soldier here above their head. And clicking this little icon to the right goes into the equip screen. So this allows you to go and change the soldier's body type, change their head, change their hair... Uh, facial hair, you can change hair colours, eye colours, you can change I'm the here. voice that they have, um, you can change the colours of their armour, there are armour patterns as well, and there's a handy randomise button here, if you just want to quickly go through your soldiers, and just make them all look different, so you can sort of quickly and instantly spot them on the battlefield. Can't wait. There are some really sort of weird colour combinations that you can get here, but it's a good way of being able to uh, to find somebody out on the battlefield when they all look a little bit different. There's Adrian. Oh, that's a nice colour combination right there. There's one of our other snipers. Nice bright yellow sniper. Stand out like a sore thumb. So, customization is there. Let's go into the research screen. Research projects are critical for improving your capabilities and winning the game. To speed up research, build more research labs. Research requires time, so make sure it is advancing in the geoscape. And it wants us to research atmospheric analysis. So it's the only option we've got. It'll take six hours. We have managed to connect to some of the remaining weather satellites. We should use these to assess the extent of the new mist outbreak. Bonus effects, global mist monitoring system available. Let's go ahead and work on atmospheric analysis. We need to go back to the geoscape here and we need to advance time so we can complete that research and at the same time we're actually recovering our uh, stamina down here. Reprogramming of our satellite systems have revealed the extent of the new mist outbreak. The origin sites are in coastal sea regions as in the previous two incursions but the activity level seems higher posing a serious threat to remaining life on earth. Haven's core within the mist will be at risk of attack, so we should explore mist-covered regions thoroughly and defend any havens trapped within them. Our geoscape monitoring systems have been updated with the current mist coverage. The mist represents the progression of the Pandora virus as it spreads throughout the globe. The Pandora mutations will attempt to build colonies on areas of land covered by the mist, which will then attack nearby havens. To meet this threat, you will need to produce equipment select the manufacturing button so we can see the mist down here and uh, on the coast if we go to the manufacturing button weapons vehicles and armor are manufactured by fabrication plants provided the required research has been developed and there are enough resources available items take varying amounts of time to produce to speed up the process build more fabrication plants and it wants us to manufacture a med kit so we can just go ahead and do that we have ourselves an extra med kit Satellite uplink. Satellite uplinks allow area scans to be initiated, revealing new sites of interest. The more uplinks there are available, the more simultaneous scans can be performed. 
An area scan can only be performed by an aircraft centered on its location. The scanning zone will expand over time, revealing new sites. So we want to perform an area scan. We can do that by clicking this button down here next to the manticore, or we can actually click on the point of interest that we are in orbit of. We're going to go ahead and do an area scan. We will need to unpause the game to allow that to continue. Uh, we don't have any new research available at the moment. But as this area scan expands, we will uncover new points of interest. The tutorial is now complete. From here on uh, out, it's all up to us to survive, explore, and become humanity's salvation. It also tells us that we can check the Phoenixpedia for more information about the game. And now we must find out what happened to the Phoenix Project. Research the Phoenix Archives. So down here we have the Phoenixpedia. This will give us a guide to the game, explaining many of the game's mechanics and intricacies. Uh, we also have a list of all of the research that we've completed. There's a tab here for the enemies that we've researched, which we haven't done yet. And then we've got information about individual bits of weapons, armor, uh, equipment, uh, and vehicles are all listed in here. Uh, let us go back to the research tab. We can do an Arthron autopsy or we can do the Phoenix Archives. So we have been advised by the tutorial to research the Phoenix Archives. We've discovered a batch of encrypted files on the mainframe of the newly reclaimed Phoenix base. According to the file names, these are the Phoenix Archives or what remains of them. So we'll add that to our research queue and we will then put the or uh, Arthron autopsy in behind it. Arthrons are among the earliest Pandorans encountered and they are the most numerous. They have multiple mutations to adapt to different combat roles. And we can drop back to the Geoscape. You'll also notice we now have a new point of interest, a new unexplored site that has appeared on the Geoscape. And in our next video, we will be heading over there to see what that holds in store for us. Thanks a lot for watching. We will see you on the next video.